Hello everyone to the seventh and final part of Fainting in Front of the Team Pretty Setter Edition. Since you had to wait so long for the Shirabu part, I thought I would make you wait not at all for this one. So let's get started. I hope you will like it. Have you ever had struggles finding good Haiku merch or anime merch in general? Because I for sure did. It can be hard. But this shop offers amazing merch. Like, I'm literally obsessed with the Haiku merch. They have the cutest hoodies ever. Now, if you want to get 10% off, click the link in the description. They offer me a collaboration, which is literally amazing. And you support my channel this way. So, win-win. Let's go. Kokone's heart beat nervously in his chest the whole way to Shira Terizawa. There were few things in this world that made him actually nervous, and the game was something he was genuinely excited about. The challenge itself also wasn't the problem. It was the combination of both that made him almost giddy, filled to the brim with a nervous energy that gave Futakuchi a headache as he made sure to emphasize more than once during the ride. Truth was, if there was someone that could be considered Kogane's crush, it wasn't one of his teammates. The person didn't attend his school at all. He was playing for Shiro Toizawa. Crush also might not be the correct term, ever since the last time they faced off in a training camp organized by the coach of Shiro Toizawa. They ended up in a staring contest Kogane was blissfully unaware of after practice. He had still tried to decipher whether Goshiki was mad at him when the ace simply closed the gap between them with a kiss, taking Kogane by surprise. In all honesty, he didn't know what invoked their first encounter of a kind, but he knew that it didn't just remain one encounter. And he knew that personally, he didn't want it to end. However, he had not yet come up with a good way of asking Goshiki to clarify the state of their... situationship. Best to test the waters with this challenge to see whether he cared about more than the occasional makeout session. Man, Kungane, I can hear you think all the way here. What's got you so worked out? Well, it is Shiro what we're talking about. Huh? So what? We're gonna go in there and win. Easy. Don't get the nerves because they are some prestigious school. Fudakuchi rolled his eyes and the bickering started. Koganegawa kept out of it and simply waited for it to settle or for Aane to settle it for them. The plan sounded easy enough. Still, his heartbeat fastened with nervous excitement as they walked down the hall to the set of stairs Shirapu had mentioned. His eyes wandered over the small group of people before him, his team, Shirabu's, until they ultimately fixated on the young ace-to-be of Shira Terizawa. His hair was a mess as much as it could be with that ridiculous haircut, and his expression was determined, yet coined from exhaustion. To Kogane, he looked gorgeous. He loved the passion burning in the dark eyes, even when he was off the court. Goshiki always devoted to things he loved with all his heart. Kogane just wished to one day be one of them, that the passion in his eyes was meant for him, for more than just the brief moments they shared. He sighed, almost missing the signal as Shirabu tucked his sleeve and pulled him backward. The plan had seemed easy enough, yet as they quickly ran down the stairs an unsettling uncertainty washed over him. Something was wrong, he had been too distracted, he... He slipped. He tried and fought for balance, but failed to regain it. He twisted his ankle in an attempt to catch himself, in vain, as he collided with the steps. It felt as though the air had been forced out of his lungs and he slid further down. He could barely tell up from down at this point until his head collided painfully with a hard floor at the bottom of the steps. His ears felt with the rushing and thumping of his own blood chased through his veins by his racing heart. 
the pain throbbed from the back of his skull through his entire head with an intensity you'd think someone tried to pry it open. He closed his eyes. Every sensation caused the pain to intensify and just wished to disappear into a soundless void. He could barely process the thought of whether Shirabu had been equally as unfortunate or if it was just his clumsiness and distracted mind that got him here. From somewhere above him, voices tried with increasing force to cut through the fog clouding his mind. Their words and meaning forcing themselves past the rustling in his ears and Kogane wished nothing more than to tell them to shut the F up. Wake up! Hey, Kogane! Damn it! Kogane? Kanji. Goshiki's voice had died down to a whisper. He almost didn't hear it over the others shouting. But. but as soon as he heard the despair in his voice, he focused on it with all he got. His heart broke, hearing him so distressed. Kanji, please, it's gonna be alright. Just wake up. You hear me? Wake up! He felt as though he was in a bad romance movie, but nonetheless, he fought. He fought himself through the fog, if just so that Goshiki wouldn't sound that distressed anymore. His eyes blinked open slowly, and immediately he was greeted by a harsh light blinding him. It got better when an all too familiar face leaned over him, blocking the direct light from the ceiling lights. Hey. You idiot! What happened? He flinched as the sound caused another wave of pain to hunt on his nervous system like lightning. Immediately, Goshiki backed away and lowered his voice. Kogane? What happened? Where are you hurt? His attention was torn from Goshiki to the surprisingly calm Futakuchi kneeling to his other side. Sorry, Captain. That wasn't my question. Uh, right. We must have slipped. He nodded slowly. What hurts? My head. I think I hit it when I landed on the ground. And... There was something else, but he couldn't remember. The pain in his head drowned out anything else. Okay, can you stand? We'll bring you to the nurse. I can do that. I know where the nurse's office is and we'll find it faster anyway. Futokuchi's eyes narrowed slightly, but Kogane nodded in agreement and he complied reluctantly. They helped him to his feet, which was when Kogane was harshly reminded about what he'd forgotten. A sharp pain rushed through his lack and suddenly his entire weight leaned on Goshiki, who stabilized them with a surprised huff. The ankle too then, huh? Yeah. His gaze wandered over to Goshiki. Sure, you can take it. I only could help you. No, I get this. He indeed was stronger than he looked, but Kugani still considered it adorable how he'd get competitive over simply bringing him to the nurse. If you say so, but be sure to get him there in one piece. I'll check on you in a couple of minutes. Goshiki nodded determinedly, and as Futakuchi turned around to inform the coach, so did Goshiki to bring him to the nurse. They worked silently for a while. Well, Kogane was rather dragged along by the other, but he didn't complain. The pain slowly subsided, leaving enough room in his head to admire his hero. Look at you, being all worried for me. His teasing had the desired effect as Goshiki's cheeks turned pink and he huffed, but 
didn't dare meet his eyes. His eyes always gave him away. Say, Tsutomo? Hmm? Do you? He hesitated. Do you like me? For a moment he stopped and looked at him incredulously. Of course I like you. What do you think I'm doing this for? Right. He didn't quite know what this meant for them, but he wasn't sure if he should ask for clarification. His throat tightened as the words assembled at the back of his mouth, but when he looked at Goshiki again, they died on his tongue. It wasn't fair. Not when he couldn't leave the situation. He took a deep breath and simply enjoyed the warmth Goshiki provided and the gentle distraction from the pain until they'd have to separate to uncertainty again. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you liked it. If you did, consider leaving a like because it really helps the channel grow. Consider leaving a comment with your favorite quote or something else or whatever else you thought about it. And consider subscribing because you are amazing and I would love to have you here. This part was a little shorter. Um, for context, watch the Shirobu part. And I know that a lot of you are waiting for the alternative parts with Kageyama and Semi and so on. But I have to tell you, for now, I will take a short break from this series and I will come back to it very soon. Um, but of course, other series for the non-poly ships are in planning, so be excited for that. Now I hope you have a wonderful and amazing day. Step one, wake up, really gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think real hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.